Hey there! In this life, you will run into certain people who are rather dangerous. One of those people is called Brian Greer, and he runs Chatterley Luxuries, and he is a very dangerous man. Uh, he's a dangerous man because he makes you want all sorts of things that you never even knew you wanted, but that you do want. And one of those things I had been eyeing for a while, I saw one on the uh, table of the inimitable one-man pen show Sarge Minhas, didn't purchase it at the time, uh, and then I saw that Chatterley Luxuries had these. I emailed a bit back and forth with Bryant, um, he's, a, he's a very nice guy, and uh, I, I had some questions about the size of the pen, he was very kind, he provided me with all sorts of pictures, he has done it in the past for me too. Very nice guy to do business with. And the pen uh, in question is, in fact, the Danitrio Genkai, which is a massive pen. Uh, very simple, but a massive pen. I fell in love with it. I bought it. My bank account regretted it, but I do really love it. It's, it's a superb piece. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Damn you, Bryant. Always the same thing. Anyway, um, I, I'm just kidding, of course. Let's get started. Alright, lads and lasses. I guess not winning me. I could have done this review, given that it's a red pen. But for now, let's first look at the box. Uh, Chatterley Luxuries always get a nice little uh, package. There is a little bookmark in the shape of a nib. But um, uh, Ziza uh, ran off with that. I am just trying to figure out how to open this. Oh, wait a minute. I actually almost managed to destroy that plastic, but I think I, I managed to keep it in one piece. Chatterley Luxury Branded Polishing Cloth. Great idea. These pens can use a quick wipe down once in a while. Um, so I think that's a very nice, attentive little uh, gift that, that always makes you feel very welcome. So there's that, there's the bookmark, and then there is the box, the pen. Now, for a fairly exclusive pen, this uh, pen actually has a very simple box, and I'll, I'll be fair, I love that. I'm not a collector of boxes, I like pens, not, not useless packaging material. I know that people, some people love giant, luxurious, heavy boxes. I'm not one of them, and that's just my opinion. Cardboard outer sleeve, um, very important, and then we have this beautiful, simple, pine coffin, at least I think it's pine, labeled in Nitrio, very simple and very light, very light box. Box opens up and then you have what I think is another polishing cloth, um, but it would also in fact make a decent pen bed, uh, because this pen rolls around a bit, you see. There is an eyedropper, useful for this pen, I believe there's nothing under this, no. Nope. Um, and then there's the pen, so very simple. And again, I don't need anything else for a pen, so for me this is perfect. Okay, then we have the pen. The pen is an ebonite body with Roiro Migaki uh, Urushi. Now, I'm not an Urushi expert, but as I understand it, a uh, typical Urushi application has three layers, a base layer, a middle layer, and then a final layer, where uh, with the final layer is uh, an oil-based Urushi mix, right? Urushi is just the, the, the lacquer. Uh, but Roiro Migaki, you, you do those first two things, the base layer and then the middle layer, but then you use an oil-free refined Urushi lacquer. Um, and then it gets burnished with uh, a special charcoal to give it that sort of shiny luster you see here. Uh, which I think is, is very nice. So that's Urushi. Urushi typically is pretty expensive. Uh, so that, that adds a bit to the price. Now, just so you know, just as we're chatting about the pen anyway, uh, there is a smaller version of this pen too, called the uh, the, the Ko Genkai, uh, but this is the full-size Genkai, which is in fact fairly massive, and as I bring that up now, may as well show you, that is a Lamy Safari. So it is a massive giant pen. Nice number 8 nib, but I'll come back to that. Let's go over the parts of the pen. On top, nothing, flat top, simple cap, no features on it whatsoever. The only feature is what you see here, which is the, um, uh, as I understood, Brian told me, Bryant told me, um, it's the um, 
uh, the, the, the name of the, the lacquer artist. Barrel doesn't taper down, it's just solid. And then here you have a turning knob for the one-way shut-off valve, to which I'll come back in a second. The cap unscrews, section, tapers down, flares out a little bit, and then you have the number 8 nib. Next to a safari nib, you can see that that is a larger nib. Uh, and one of the things I absolutely love about Denitrio is the nib imprint. Two-tone nib, 18K broad, but I just love this imprint. I think this is absolutely stunning, and that's one of my favorite things about these pens. Okay, the pen is massive, it's huge, it does not post, it is gargantuan, it is enormous, uh, and that's kind of what I liked, and I'll tell you this, it is superbly comfortable. It really is lovely. The section is perfect, it has the indentation at just the right spot, making for a lovely, lovely writing experience that I, I absolutely adore. So that's a lot of fun. Ebonite Feed, which gets a very nice sheen if you use a slightly sheeny ink, which is kind of fun. And then there is, of course, the filling system. I cannot really unscrew this because I've just inked it up. The pen holds close to four milliliters of ink. Uh, you use the eyedropper to fill it up, and it has the one-way shut-off valve that you see on more uh, Japanese pens. What does that mean? Um, it means that you can open this up. There is something kind of like a piston in there, but you, it's not the traditional piston where you pull this out to draw up ink. You put it down, in this case a flat top, so you can easily do that. Uh, you put ink in with an eyedropper, after unscrewing the section, of course. Now, the interesting thing is that section... Um, I should probably make a fool myself by trying to draw this for your edification. Um, the section is designed in such a way, because I get a lot of questions about this. Now, I cannot draw, okay? If I could draw, I would have become an artist, but I'm not an artist, therefore I cannot draw. Now figure out if that's a logical statement, okay? Okay, here you have a section. Now this section has a big hole in it. That hole is there, all right? Now here you have the barrel of the pen. You know, for my doing, it's actually not that terrible. Uh, here you have this line, which you can barely even see. If you don't know it's there, you don't even see it, but that's the line that, that separates this turning knob from the barrel, okay? Connected to that is a rod. The rod comes down, and the rod blocks that hole with a little plug, okay? So under normal circumstances, you can write with this, but if you want to make it wetter, you open that up as far as you like, so that more ink flows into the hole. Because the hole uh, is plugged by something that is actually tapered, so you can remove it farther and farther from the hole, letting more ink go in there, and everything will be beautiful, and you get a wetter writing experience. Now, this is not yet the writing sample, but um, at some point, if you don't open this, it will stop writing because the ink flow is completely blocked, right? But it's a pretty wet writer to begin with, if you really want to, because people ask me to demonstrate this, just making sure there's ink in there, you can make it very, very wet by opening that all the way. Um, but it's very hard to demonstrate this in video. It's not like it goes from something that barely writes to, to a thing that just drips ink on the page. So this is the demonstration of how wet it gets, okay? All right, so as I said, high ink capacity, almost four milliliters, um, one-way shut-off valve, interesting system, and of course the, uh, uh, the number eight, I think, beautiful nib. So, they have it. Now, let's see how the pen writes. And I've already kind of shown you that just now. Um, but, oh, that's it's rather wet, isn't it? I will use the back of that page for something else, don't worry. Okay, let's open this up. So, what do we have here? What we have here is this. We have the... The Nitrio... Genkai. And as I understand it, Genkai is Japanese for limit. Perhaps one of my Japanese friends can enlighten me and say if that is actually the case. 18 karat broad, broad nib, and the ink is uh, Hiroshi Zuku Momiji. Okay. 
do some writing. Writing is nice, smooth, lovely, wet, a real pleasure to use. Uh, I have used this pen for extended writing sessions. I can't do talking and fast writing, sorry. Okay, see at this point it may start to skip a little bit, but I don't think anyone writes that fast. Um, I have used the pen for extended writing sessions, and I'll tell you, it's massive, but I find it so comfortable I don't have any issues. Now that may also be a bit of a function of hand size. If you do have very small hands, then maybe this is not the pen for you. There's nothing wrong with that. There is, as I said, the, the Ko Genkai, which is smaller. Nice and wet. Not a gusher that makes a, a, a blobs ink on the page. Oh, another thing, uh, when it comes to burping, people ask me, does the pen burp because it's a massive eyedropper? I haven't had a single burp, and I've used it for, as I said, quite a long while, even long writing sessions. There's an 18K nib. Uh, there is a little bit of spring. Always very careful when you do this, but it's not a flex nib by any means. Reverse writing. Perfectly possible. Takes it from a broad nib to a good fine, I would say. And that's uh, very, very pleasant. So, not bad at all. Um, I love this pen. I love writing with it. End of the writing sample. Let's see what I like about it and what I not like about it. Alright, so what do I think about the Danitrio Genkai? Um, well, I purchased it, I thought about it for a long time. As I said, I saw them on Sarge's table and I've been kind of... This is one of those pens that you see and then they kind of stay in the back of your mind. At some point the opportunity presented itself uh, for me to, to get one. Um, they are not cheap. I Right now, as I was recording this, I couldn't find them on the Chatterley website, um, but I seem to recall they are about, I, I want to say 1500, uh, close to 1500 US. So by no means a cheap pen. There's no two ways about that. It's an expensive pen. But there are a couple of things that I really like about it. It's a massive pen. I like larger pens. This is I always think there is sort of a, a physical limit to the size a pen can have without becoming uncomfortable. And a lot of people might say, well, this is an absurd uh, size. It's way too big. I beg to differ. I, I find it's actually very comfortable and I really like a large pen. And this is a large pen. This brings all sorts of things into play. For example, good luck trying to find a pen pouch for this. There aren't that many pouches that fits pen, fit pens of this size. There are a few, um, but that's a whole different matter. So what you get for the very high price is a massive pen. Um, you do get a number eight nib. You get a massive ink capacity because close to four milliliters is no joke, right? Average uh, uh, conversion is what? 0.7 to 0.9 maybe milliliters. Um, so this is a lot of ink and it writes for a very long time without drying out, I can tell you. Um, very nice nib. Again, I, I just love what, what uh, Denitrio does to, to the, the, the nib imprint. That is just stellar. It, I, I really think it looks beautiful. Probably my favorite nib imprint of them all. And the final thing, it's comfortable. I can't say anything else. It's comfortable. Maybe if you have smaller hands, not so much. But for me, even though it's massive, they've shaped that section in such a way that it's really quite comfortable. Doesn't post, doesn't need to post, doesn't have a clip, doesn't need a clip. As far as I'm concerned, this is exactly how it should be. It's perfect and lovely that you can regulate the wetness of the pen. <clears throat> of course, there are a couple of downsides as well. Um, one, very expensive. As I said, just the way it is. Actual Urushi, real Urushi, is expensive. The craftsmanship requires a lot of skill. Uh, I understood once that you can only actually do the lacquering specific times of the year because the humidity has to be right, so there's a lot of conditions. 
But even so, having said all that, even if, even if you consider this to be some sort of artisanal uh, pen, it's expensive. It is. And I'm not going to defend that. Some people will find it too expensive, others will say, yeah, I see it in there. It's fine. Um, second thing, it's massive. It's a big pen, and that is simply not for everyone. So I can see how, for some people, this would be absurd and they would never buy that, and that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are many, many smaller pens, including, in fact, a smaller version of this pen. The final thing that I, I would love to have seen slightly differently is actually two things, um, is on a pen like this, there is an ebonite feed. Uh, I would love to have seen them use either red, ebon red ebonite or do what they did on the Namiki Emperor, which is lacquer the feed. Now, there is some issues with lacquering the feed when it comes to that liquid. Um, that doesn't always hold up well. Uh, I haven't really had any issues with the Emperor, but still. There is red hard rubber, you could use that, so red ebonite, you could use that for the feed. It wouldn't be the same shade though. I've seen that on the Wancho pen, uh, they did a very nice job on that, um, but it is not the same shade as the Arushi is. So even though it's red, I still don't know if that's better. I have to admit, I'm not really bothered by the black feed, especially because the threads are also black. But, that is another point of criticism, it would be cool if the threads were lacquered as well. And then you may say, oh, but if they lacquer the threads, won't that lacquer wear off? Well, let me tell you this. Um, this is an Amiki Emperor that has lacquered threads and nothing has chipped or crumbled or whatever. So there is that. Now, because I know you want to see that uh, side by side, these are two massive pens. And the Genkai is just a tiny, tiny bit bigger than the, uh, uh, the, the Emperor is. Capped, uh, uncapped, the Emperor takes the cake, and that's mainly because of that massive, massive nib that the Emperor has. Um, so, there is that. Question. Do you want, I kind, I think I kind of know the answer to this, but do you want to see me do a shootout between the Genkai and the Emperor? Then let me know in the comments, and I shall see what I can do. The bottom line for this pen. This is grail pen territory. Price, looks, um, not for everyone. Some people hate this, some people love this. I'm fully aware of that. I'm one of the people who loves it. I think it's a fantastic pen. The price is fantastic too, and not necessarily in a good way. That's the way it is, especially when it comes to grail pens. Uh, they're, they're typically not five dollars. Um, that's how it is. So you have to make up for yourself whether you think that is, that is worth it. To me it is. And that's it. Cool filling system. Cool nib, nib writes very well. Um, what else could you wish for? So, I hope this was useful, and um, I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Bye!